Luna Classic holders, what that means to them. In addition, we'll talk about Luna Classic's re-enablement of staking in this new version 21. The 1.2% burn tax is in place. We'll go over various conceivable timelines, as well as the implications for the token's value. Let's begin with this. Take a look at that decrease. While the rest of the market has cooled off from the fervor it was experiencing only a few days ago, ETH has remained relatively hot. Nonetheless, Luna Classic's price is precisely in line with us 3.7 cents. However, as I just indicated, the market as a whole has cooled off a bit. Just under 23,000 Bitcoins are in circulation. Over the past seven days, ETH has been the only player to consistently pump the gas, maintaining a level of $1,600 or more. This is what we learned today, as evidenced by this headline. 800k ETH departs Gemini as a bullish indication for Ethereum. There are a lot of people that have their crypto on an exchange, and right now, they may be selling it. When it isn't on a trading platform, we're quite aware that they're misrepresenting the product. For all intents and purposes, you're not trading one coin for another. When you see a lot of Gemini, it's usually a positive indication. And it's a strange move, too. Perhaps additional information will become available in the coming days. These metrics were released by CryptoQuant but there hasn't been any support for them. Even if they are building up for a validator position, we're still seeing more than $1 trillion in market capitalization across the board as we take a step back. Looking at it from this angle, though, we see the most significant development. As one of the business's co-founders, Daniel Shin, discusses his departure from the company in 2020, South Korean authorities expand their investigation into possible ties to terrorism. In spite of this, they invaded his house in an attempt to obtain information. They'd like to speak with these individuals. They've gone through all the processes that we've come through here. If you read this article, exchanges are followed by a travel ban. Bitham and Upbid, two significant South Korean exchanges, were in evidence. We also saw South Korea postpone their new legislation on cryptocurrencies and stablecoins until they complete this inquiry. As a result, I believe South Korea's cultural mindset is that the entire world is watching them, and they don't want to make a mistake. And if anything, I think they're trying to show that they're serious when they go for these folks by being unnecessarily pushy in their approach. Dokken is suspected to be living in Singapore at the moment. Prosecutors are investigating whether he's moving cryptocurrency gains to an offshore account to avoid, you know, authorities evading taxes. If you keep reading, You'll learn that prosecutors are also looking into this. Do you think that's surprising? The video appears to be empty. I'd be shocked. Like, I'd be amazed if that didn't happen over and over again. We also received this news, which I wouldn't normally discuss. FTC is considering buying the most popular South Korean exchange, except Bitham. And that was one of the exchanges that they rated in the South Korean inquiry, as we just showed. This acquisition may not happen. But it's intriguing that it's being considered for version 21, which will allow staking and delegation to be enabled once again. What this means for those of us who don't want to be validators and want to engage in delegation is that the 1.2% burn tax, which will be activated in this version 21, will also be supported by the community once it is deployed on the chain. Binance will just be the next to do so. As a result, that bit of wonderful news is now in our possession. Because even terror rebels don't know the date. Anyone who claims to know the date is lying. Right present, several extremely promising tests are being conducted. However, this is just a test. As of right now, we do not know when we will be deploying. In any event, if we do obtain a date, I'll let you know. In addition, I'll demonstrate how to navigate Terra Station and outsource your Luna Classic to others. There will be plenty of opportunities to participate in the staking. I believe it will arrive sooner than we expect. And they're doing a fantastic job over there. These people are on call 24 hours a day. Your questions are being answered in the Discord. They're doing all of the work here. They are looking to hire fresh employees. Luna Classic has a lot of exciting things in store in the next few weeks and months. And I am personally taking some of my money and dollar cost averaging in a little bit at these low numbers because I believe that a complete market downturn is only a matter of time. It's possible, however, that a low-level token with a strong community like this may see a significant rise in value. This narrative was also interesting to me. It hasn't been officially verified. 
And, to be honest, I'm not convinced this is accurate to a 100%. Micro strategies, Michael Saylor may be secretly abandoning Bitcoin, according to some chain analysis. Apparently, this is one of two micro strategy wallets, as they've been investigating only the movement between the wallets. As they quote some sources here from Cryptoquin citing this wallet here, ending with this VC. They also claimed that the second wallet had sent a large sum of Bitcoin to Coinbase. 